Hi, good evening, Bridgewater Rainham. This is Ryan Powers, the Assistant Superintendent of Schools. It is Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. I wanted to take this opportunity to provide some updates regarding the spring 2021 return to school. Uh, if you bear with me, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, we have some information to present to you tonight. All right, great. Thank you so much. So I do, I have a brief presentation for you this evening to try to provide you as much information as possible, at least the information that we know at this time. And as we always say, we really appreciate when parents uh, tune into these videos, read the information that Mr. Swenson's putting out, and also reach out to us at central office, whether it's through phone call or through email, to answer questions that you may have. Uh, obviously, there's uh, a lot of information out there through a variety of different uh, sources, and it's always best to get your information right from the district. So we appreciate you taking the time this evening, uh, tuning in, and uh, you know we're gonna get going and I'll walk you through this. So what we hope to accomplish tonight is to be able to give you a review of what has transpired thus far during the 2021 school year. Obviously, to understand where we are at this point, it also helps to understand where we've uh, come from. Uh, we're going to review some information released by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of news coming out of Malden at this time, and we'll bring you up to speed on what we know. Uh, we'll also talk to you about uh, what the return to school plan uh, will look like for the spring, and then we'll talk about next steps. So as I mentioned, it's important to kind of understand where we started the school year. And if you go back to summer of 2020, uh, specifically in August, when we presented information to the school committee and to the community regarding the return to school in the fall for our students. Uh, you know, we had uh, quite a bit of information available at, at our fingertips, but we also had a lot of information that was still unknown, certainly around COVID-19 and what the impacts of that would be on the school year. However, when we were doing our uh, initial analysis of the district last summer and certainly in the spring and then into the summer, what we realized is that we were we were faced with a few challenges uh, and none were related at that time to uh, anything health and safety. It really had to do with projected enrollment, our space constraints and obviously transportation protocols. Uh, and specifically, obviously, at that time, we had a projected enrollment. Uh, of, of a large number of students given the confines of, of our spaces. So for example, and we know in some of our schools we can fit 24 students into a classroom. However, we had class sizes of 27. So we were faced with that challenge. Where do we put those extra students? Does it mean going to communal spaces? And those were all possibilities last year. And as you know, space constraints, and we've talked about this before, and, and I know, um, you know, uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's easy to forget, but we are down a school building. Uh, we are currently down uh, a, a thousand student school. That has a significant impact on the district. Thankfully, uh, through the uh, you, you know, graciousness of the town and the state, we do have a new building project up and running, uh, and that'll open in fall of 2022, which will certainly alleviate our space constraints across the district. Uh, but that is a reality for us, and it continues to be so. And obviously transportation protocols because of physical distancing on the school buses, we were not able to safely transport all of our students that were eligible for transportation. So really given those three roadblocks, uh, we proposed a hybrid model to start our school year. Now, given obviously the uncertainty of what that was going to look like and being concerned about the health and, health and safety of all of our students and staff, uh, we started the school year with, with uh, relative success. And, you know, we continued and we continue to do it even now to, to assess the possibility of bringing additional students back. That it was something that continued to happen throughout the school year. However, the, the, the constraints that we had back in the summer and in the fall still exist today. Our high class size in some cases, our space constraints, we're still down that school building. Uh, thankfully, transportation protocols have been updated and I'll share that information with you uh, as we go through this presentation. Um, you know, the other thing to, to really be mindful of is, you know, when we started to look at bringing students back, uh, you know, late fall saying, OK, is it time to do it? We were approaching the holiday season. And as you know, uh, because we, we all lived it, uh, certainly the numbers after the holidays and during the holidays uh, spiked, not just here at Bridgewater Rainham, but certainly across the Commonwealth and across the country. Um, and in one of our highest uh, peak periods uh, was when we returned from our uh, first vacation in January. 
for a given week, we had 93 positive students and staff in one particular week. We also had 681 students and staff in quarantine. Those are significant numbers. And I know there's research out there to support that school is safe and school, and we believe school is a 100% safe place, but that's our reality. And so when we were meeting with our boards of health on a weekly basis, talking about the community numbers, talking about school numbers, we were assessing, is it safe for us to bring students back at that time? And certainly it wasn't. Uh, but now fast forward, obviously here we are in the spring. Uh, we had started to explore returning a selected populations of students. And, you know, obviously, given the uh, recent update from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, we are moving forward with bringing uh, full groups of students back to school. So as I stated uh, this past Friday on March 5th, the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education voted to grant uh, Commissioner Riley, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education Commissioner, the authority to determine when hybrid and remote learning no longer counts towards structured learning time. This essentially granted Commissioner Riley the ability to mandate the return uh, of students to in-person learning during this school year. Uh, Commissioner Riley has proposed a, a phased in approach. So the dates that we know right now, and this is you know hot off the presses, we just re uh, received this information this afternoon. We had known uh, that he was uh, moving forward with elementary with an April 5th start date. But as of this afternoon, he also shared with districts and with the community and, and public at large, uh, that he would like to move middle school students, uh, return middle school students on April 28th. Now, what we are going to focus on uh, in terms of grade configurations and really the, the main bulk of tonight's information, we'll, we'll really be focusing on the K to six population because that's our first return group. Um, we are going K through six. Obviously, Commissioner Riley, the numbers when, when he talks about elementary school, the grade level spans, he focuses on K to five, but we know that every district is configured a little bit differently. So he did leave some autonomy up to the districts in terms of determining what elementary uh, meant. And for us, after we did an internal review, we felt K to six would really constitute our elementary grade levels. So when we talk about returning middle school students, subsequently we're, we're talking about grades seven and eight, and then obviously the high school students being nine through 12. Uh, now at this time, we don't really have any additional information about high school. Uh, we are expecting tentative dates uh, to be released by the commissioner at a later date. Uh, all we're being told at this point is that we would have a, a you know, roughly an approximately two week, um, uh, uh, you know, notice that uh, it's time to return high school students back to school. So once we have those uh, dates, we will certainly share them with you. And once we have more information about the return of our se grade seven and eight students, we'll obviously provide that information as well. But really the main focus this evening is going to be on our first group to return, and that is our K to six students. Few things to remember, and this goes back again to the summer when we asked for your understanding and, and patience and flexibility. This plan is, is being developed as we're speaking. Uh, so as you're watching this, uh, you know whether you're watching this tonight, tomorrow night, uh, over the next few days, the plan, our return to school plan is constantly being updated. Uh, that guidance uh, that I spoke about earlier was released this afternoon. Uh, it was a, roughly a 16, 17 page document. Uh, obviously, you know, we as a district uh, have already gone through that, but we really want to digest it, understand all the implications and develop a, a, a solid plan, uh, especially now that we know uh, the return date of our middle school students. Uh, thankfully, over the last uh, you know few months, but more specifically, the last few weeks, because we did have the uh, indication from the commissioner that he was planning to return our elementary students, we really uh, honed in on, on those grades. So we are, we are fortunate that we're in a good place right now for our elementary, and we'll obviously continue to refine our plan for our middle school and then high school students. Uh, but again, I, you know, it really is important to understand that as we receive additional guidance from the state, as we receive information from our family surveys, through our local boards of health and, and obviously our local health metrics, or any other means that we receive information, we will continue to revise and change and edit this plan. So it, it is gonna be a constant uh, evolution over the next few weeks, really until we return students to school. And then even once we have kids back in the building, we're obviously gonna be revisiting this as we go. Uh, but it's important to note that as we uh, proactively plan for the return of our students, you know, there are a couple key groups that we're, we're really working proactively and collaboratively with. That is obviously our local health agents, the Rainham Board of Health, the, the Bridgewater Board of Health and, and, and the health agents. They are phenomenal. They've been a great asset to us. 
uh, as well as our, uh, you know, local, uh, our, our district nursing staff, and certainly our nurse leader, Claire Grennan. Uh, just the, the entire nursing staff here in the district has just done amazing work, and, and we're constantly getting updates from them. Obviously, Mr. Pacheco and our facilities department, uh, they really have taken the lead uh, in, in terms of uh, getting us back to school throughout the year, making sure it's safe, making sure it's clean and sanitized, and they will continue to do so. Uh, obviously, our administrative team, uh, again, second to none, Mr. Swenson and I truly believe we have one of the best administrative teams in the Commonwealth, and you know their collective efforts on a daily basis uh, prove that to be true. Uh, thankfully, we have a very strong um, in, in, in uh, strong partnerships with our collective bargaining units. So again, all of those units are working proactively. We're working together. Uh, everybody wants the same common goal. We want a safe return to in-person learning. We want to get our students back to school, obviously, when it's safe and appropriate to do so. And now we have those tentative dates uh, where we're going to return school, uh, re return students to school. And then uh, Mr. Lucini and Lucini Bus Lines, our transportation vendor, getting ready to transport our students back. Uh, so as I stated already, you know, the focus of our, our planning efforts at this point and the information we're going to share tonight is really around K to six. We will provide some information this evening around seven through 12. Uh, but as that information unfolds and uh, a clearer picture of what that means for our district, um, you know, you know, uh, comes into view, we will certainly share that as soon as possible. So this is a, a quick overview, return to school timeline. This again could be updated, revised, uh, but these are the dates, important dates that we know thus far. Obviously this evening is the ninth. Uh, we did reconvene our reopening committee. Uh, we reviewed the information from the department as well as we shared with them uh, reopening information for the spring. Uh, we had great conversation dialogue. They are, are members of our reopening committee made up of uh, you know uh, uh, parents, uh, we have administrators, teachers on there, always asking great thought provoking questions. Uh, so it's really gonna help us in, in the planning process. Uh, our plan is on Wednesday, March 10th, tomorrow evening, we're going to be releasing uh, additional uh, information of this presentation, as well as a survey. Uh, this is a final return to school survey that we're going to ask. Uh, right now, we're asking only our parents of uh, K through six students to complete that survey. We will be releasing another one for our seven to 12 students. Um, obviously all parents are welcome to, to view it, uh, but we're asking at this point only our K to six parents to fill out that survey. And this is really after tonight, uh, we provide you this information. It's really a way to gather your intentions for the remainder of the school year. And I'll talk through what exactly that means. Um, and obviously uh, next Tuesday, the 16th, uh, we will be having a town hall meeting. Uh, we will provide information to the school, uh, Bridgewater Rainham communities. So our, our families, our parents, our faculty, uh, and we will be collecting uh, submitted questions. Uh, there will be an opportunity on the survey that's sent out for parents to go ahead and submit questions through the survey. And we will work on answering those at the town hall on the 16th. And then on uh, March 18th, there is a school committee meeting. Uh, the school committee, uh, special school committee meeting, the school committee will review the reopening of school information and uh, proceed from there. And obviously, as I already stated, our two tentative return dates, Monday, April 5th for our elementary school students, which for us will be K through six. And uh, Wednesday, April 28th will be middle school students. For us, it will be grades seven and eight. And again, those dates are set by the department, uh, not by the district. Couple things to, to point out, uh, the, you know, the, the plan that we're building, and obviously we'll share this information with you this evening, but it, it mirrors our fall reopening plan. Obviously health and safety is at the forefront. It always has been and always will continue to be so, uh, especially the mitigation strategies that we have put in place. Uh, but now, so, you know, now more than ever, uh, because we're returning more students to the building. Uh, but really it breaks down to, if you're not feeling well, whether our students or staff, uh, we are encouraging everybody as we always have to stay home and get tested. Uh, and obviously do our part, uh, as the governor always says, you know, to stop the spread. Our mitigation strategies uh, have been overall successful for us. Uh, first is to wear a mask, obviously that social distancing, hand washing, hand sanitizing, and then certainly the cleaning and disinfecting of our facilities. Uh, not to mention the, you know, the yeoman's work that our nursing staff does in terms of contact tracing. Our facilities and operation plans, uh, if you recall, each school developed their own facility and operation plan. Uh, they will be revising those to reflect the full return uh, to in-person learning. So if there are any updates that need to be made, uh, those will take place. 
Transportation, updated transportation guidance was released by the department uh, a, a number of days ago, I, I believe a couple of weeks now at this point. Uh, and what basically that transportation guidance said is that social distancing on the school bus is no longer in effect. Uh, as you know, we prior had one student per seat. Now we have the ability to put more students uh, in, in a particular seat. Uh, so we are able to adequately transport all of our students that are eligible for the bus. Uh, really what we're going to focus on tonight is um, are the site assessments at each school, uh, what we know based on enrollment, how many students we can fit, and then how we're going to proceed uh, in terms of, uh, you know, at least giving you an overview of how we're gonna proceed returning to school. And then uh, the next major part of this plan uh, will be, you know, focusing on teaching and learning. What will that look like? Uh, and obviously as that's developed, once we uh, are able to kind of digest and unpack the guidance from the commissioner, uh, we will certainly be developing that and sharing that as well. Um, you know, so a couple of key points here. Obviously, we, we've conducted site assessments at all our buildings. Uh, what we know is that each site is unique. Uh, a one size, uh, you know, one size doesn't fit all. We can't take that approach. Uh, we really have to look at each individual building because they're all shaped differently, sized differently, have a different number of students in there. Um, these site assessments were based off of our current enrollment in the hybrid model. So they do not include our students that are in the fully remote model. So again, once we uh, know everyone's intention of, of whether or not our fully remote students will come back to in-person learning, uh, we will have a better sense of, you know, really how these, these plans will shape up. Obviously, some of the information we share tonight may have to be altered depending on how many students are coming back. Uh, but conversely, you know, we may have a number of students that transition from hybrid or the in-person learning to fully remote. Um, you know, it's, it's also important to note, um, obviously, we're still going to be running our fully remote program. Uh, so really, at this point, uh, what will happen is our, you know, the, the hybrid model as we currently know it, especially starting in the elementary level and then working its way up will end. Uh, so we either have in-person learning or we'll have fully remote learning. But again, depending on how many students come back from our fully remote programs who either BR at home or Edgenuity, we may have to alter staff there. Um, in some cases, we have multiple multiple teachers at a particular grade level because class size is high. If, if a large number of students come back at a particular grade level, we may have to combine classes and one of those teachers then transitions back into being a in-person learning teacher. So there's a lot of moving parts to this. Uh, and once we have uh, more concrete numbers, once the survey closes on Monday, uh, we will be able to you know, go through this and really know what we're what we're faced with. Um, I, I do have to you know share this information. Uh, in in some cases, we are going to be reassigning classrooms to communal spaces, and we'll go through this. And we're also going to be reassigning students to new classrooms. Unfortunately, uh, given our enrollment, given our uh, space constraints, th there's no other way to get around that. Uh, but I will share that information in terms of uh, specifically which schools that's going to impact it at this time. Uh, again, that may change and, and we'll certainly update that as it, as it happens. Um, so just, sorry about that. Uh, starting with the Merrill Elementary School. So obviously, you know, elementary house, uh, Merrill Elementary houses the kindergarten and first grade students on the Rainham side of the district. Uh, as it stands right now, on average, we can we can house 27 students in our kindergarten classroom and 24 students in our first grade classrooms. Uh, we anticipate right now, based on all the information we have, that we can safely return to our current classrooms, not having to move any classrooms, not having to uh, reassign any students. We do need some additional furniture, which has been ordered and is uh, being shipped. So we're we're good there. Uh, but Merrill Elementary uh, right now, based on the information we have, uh, will be good to return with no uh, significant changes. Uh, the same really uh, proves to be true uh, on the Bridgewater side at Mitchell Elementary. As you know, Mitchell houses our kindergarten through third grade students on the Bridgewater side. On average, our classrooms can accommodate 24 students. Certainly that's an average. We know we have some classrooms that are bigger and we have some classrooms that are a little bit smaller, but for the most part, we can accommodate 24 students across the board. Again, right now, based on the information that we have, we do believe uh, we can return all Mitchell school, Mitchell school students full time. Even if we did have a number of remote students return, uh, we still have space. And obviously we already talked about 
if the need be, we would transition one of our remote teachers back. Uh, we do need additional furniture uh, just because in, in some cases we're not able to use tables that had been used. Uh, so we need to swap out some of that furniture with new furniture. So additional desks have been ordered to accommodate the return at the Mitchell Elementary. Uh, the La Liberty Elementary School on the Rainham side uh, does present uh, you know, a few unique challenges for us. So I'll, I'll spend a little bit more, more time talking about La Liberty. Um, obviously, as you know, La Liberty houses our second, third, and fourth grade students on the Rainham side. Uh, currently, as it stands, more than half of the classrooms at La Liberty have more than 24 students enrolled. 24 students is the magic number at La Liberty. That's how many students can fit safely in a classroom using social distance. Now, what we know at this point is the social distance that um, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is asking all districts to move forward with is a minimum of three feet. That is something that the school committee will be taking up on the uh, 18th. Uh, and that is something that we, we're going to have to revisit. But in order to get all of our students back, really at any school, uh, we're going to have to uh, plan to move forward with that three foot minimum. However, uh, that 24 number is based off of three feet. So you can see more than half of our classrooms will not fit. We certainly don't have uh, that number of communal spaces that we can transition classrooms into. So there's really uh, a few different options at, at uh, La Liberty that are going to take place. We are going to be moving one class at each grade level into a larger communal space, and that class will actually take on more students. So what does that mean? We are going to have to uh, reassign students from other classrooms into uh, new classes. Unfortunately, there's no way to get around that right now. Even if we were able to add additional staffing, if we added another teacher at every grade level, uh, whatever our options would be, it would mean reassigning students from their current class. In some cases, obviously, if a classroom is under 24, uh, you know, we're certainly going to try to avoid taking any students out of there. But any of our classes that have over 24 students uh, will, will result in some students being reassigned to a new teacher in order to bring class size um, under 24. Now, what that will mean, and, and this is obviously going to impact one of our other schools as well, which we'll talk about in a minute. We are going to ask uh, initially for volunteers. Uh, we have heard from some parents that they are willing uh, and, and eager to get their children back full time uh, at whatever uh, cost is necessary. And if they have to uh, move classes, their parents are willing to have their children do that. So we may find ourselves in a situation where we have a number of volunteers and we don't have to uh, you know, reassign any other students, just those that have volunteered. But certainly if not, then we're going to have to get into a you know, random selection process where unfortunately we will have to select students uh, to be reassigned to these other classrooms. And unfortunately there'll be no really no other choice in that uh, and we'll have to move forward with that plan. Uh, but again, more to come specifically uh, from La Liberty once we uh, know exactly uh, right now, uh, we, you know, uh, the building administration is working with the teachers to determine who will move to those communal spaces and how this will impact. But once we really have final numbers from our parent survey, we'll be able to then release more information going forward. Uh, the Williams Intermediate School, uh, obviously on the Bridgewater side, houses grades four, five and six. Uh, on average, we can accommodate 25 students per class. Uh, given the information that we have at this time, uh, it should not be a problem to return to uh, full-time in-person learning at the Williams Intermediate for all of our students, even those that come back from a fully remote program. So uh, again, uh, based on the information we have, we're good at the Williams. We, we don't need any additional staffing or furniture at this time. Uh, Rainham Middle School, um, obviously on, on the Rainham side of the district, houses grades five, six, seven, and eight. Obviously, at this time, we're focusing on returning grade five and six to start. And then obviously, we'll talk at a later date about returning seven and eight. Uh, what we know, again, about Rainham Middle School is that on average, we can fit 24 students uh, in each of the classroom. Each one of our fifth grade classrooms has a greater enrollment than 24. So obviously, uh, Rainham, fifth grade, uh, Rainham Middle School fifth grade is very similar to the situation at La Liberty. Uh, again, so we are going to have to uh, reassign students. Now the tentative plan at this time, and we're sharing this, but obviously as we've stated several times, this could change. Uh, an another plan could emerge and develop, but at this point we are looking at adding an additional teacher to the fire team uh, and obviously redistributing some students on the fire team. 
uh, to this new teacher. However, those students will still continue to be part of the fire team. And obviously I uh, have all of the teachers on the fire team. So there won't be significant changes uh, for those students. However, there may be some students on the earth team that need to transition over to the fire team. But again, once we have our concrete numbers from our survey, we'll know exactly, uh, you know, the impacts of that and how many students need to move. And then, uh, you know, Mrs. Charette and Mr. McKnight will be communicating that information. And again, we'll follow uh, the same process, certainly ask for volunteers and then, uh, you know, go from there. Uh, if no volunteers come forward, then we'll obviously have to go into a uh, selection process. Uh, but what we know about grade six, uh, again, great, uh, the enrollment right now, uh, we will be able to accommodate all students returning in grade six. Again, even if we have a large number of Edgenuity students that opt to return, we can still adequately house all of those classrooms and all of those students. Uh, so no significant changes there. Um, I did want to just provide a quick bit of information because um, I'm sure if, if you're, you know, have a, if you're a parent of a seventh and eighth grader or a high school, high school student, you're wondering, you know, what the situations are there. And obviously, you know, the, the major focus of tonight is K through six, but I can share a little bit of information. Uh, and obviously that this may change uh, once we, you know, continue to get further information from our parent surveys from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Uh, but what we know right now is uh, grade seven and eight uh, at RMS will return. Uh, we will uh, tentatively right now probably have to relocate one classroom, but physically relocate it. I do not believe we will have to reassign any students. We may just need to move this one classroom due to high enrollment, but just move it to a larger space. But all students in grade seven, right now the plan is to be able to keep them all together. However, grade eight uh, may result in the reassignment of students uh, to an additional classroom. But again, once we have our information from our parent survey, uh, we will know exactly what will happen. But that's that's where we're at right now with seven and eight. Uh, Bridgewater Middle School presents, uh, as I've already stated, uh, a, a unique set of circumstances because they do not have a school building. Obviously, we have high class size at Bridgewater Middle School. Our eighth grade uh, class sizes uh, hover right around 30. Uh, as uh, you know, you may or may not know, we can only fit 18 students in a classroom at the high school where our eighth grade is housed. So you're talking about a class of 30, um, you know, a full class of 30. We can only fit 18. Um, obviously, you can do the math. That's quite a number of students we have to take out of every classroom. And now you're talking about, you know, roughly 10 classes up there. So, you know, we're really Mr. Califf and, and Mr. Hines are already have the wheels in motion to try to figure this out. It may mean uh, really recreating a, a, a new model in eighth grade, possibly even seventh grade. Obviously seventh grade, we have a little bit more space. Those classrooms can hold more students, but even the enrollment in seventh grade is somewhat high. But eighth grade is really gonna be the challenge. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, it, you know, when, when students return in seventh and eighth grade, it may be using a different model than we currently use. Um, students may be relocated to a, a new learning space. And uh, in, in most cases, students are gonna be reassigned to a classroom. But again, we'll have more information uh, once we have uh, more more data from our survey and, and updated guidance. The high school, uh, obviously at, at this point, uh, you know, there's a couple of factors at the high school. Um, and I shared this information at the last school committee meeting. On average, uh, we have quite a number of classrooms on a given period that have a greater enrollment than 18. As I shared with you, 18 is the magic number. At the high school, we can fit 18 students in the majority of our classrooms. Um, we have upwards of, of almost 30 classes on any given period that have higher enrollment than 18. Uh, so the high school is going to present a, you know, a true challenge, much like uh, Bridgewater Middle School eighth grade, uh, just given the uh, number of students we can fit into a classroom and obviously the high enrollment. Uh, so the high school, uh, you know, I, I don't, um, you know, cautiously optimistic uh, that we may be able to return, but there's a lot of moving parts. If, if we were to force that return, uh, again, the school day may look significantly different. Uh, students may be enrolled in completely new classes, which we know uh, it has uh, a, a lot of ripple effects to it. So again, it's not something that we're advocating for at this time, uh, but we're looking at all creative options to try to keep some sense of normalcy uh, at the high school once we have a better sense of, of when we're gonna return. Again, you know, tonight really is focusing on K to six, but I felt, uh, you know, it was important to share that initial information that we have about grades seven through 12. 
And again, you know, at, by the time you're watching this, uh, you know, th these plans could already be updated and we will continue to share information as it becomes available. Uh, but this is what we know right now at, at this time. So again, next steps. Uh, obviously, you know, we just received that updated guidance uh, from the department today. We're going to take that, digest it, unpack it. Uh, and continue to solidify our plan. Obviously, we're going to be getting uh, survey information from parents. So on the Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, March 10th, Mr. Swenson will be sending out information, including that survey. The survey will remain open uh, until Monday, March 15th at 5 p.m. It is so important that we get a survey back for each student kindergarten through grade six. So if you have multiple children in those grade levels, please complete one survey for each student but we really need 100% participation uh, in this survey so we have an accurate count of who is coming back and who is not. And really what we're asking families through this survey, the survey is very brief, it is what your intentions are based on uh, the information that we provided to you, the two options that exist right now uh, based on the guidance that we have from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, our, our families can either opt to have their child come back to full-time in-person learning five days per week or enter the fully remote learning program. So those are the only two options that currently exist. So we are asking parents at this point, depending on your start date, if it's elementary April 5th, April 28th for our middle school students, once it's time, uh, based on the information you know at this time, and, and, and we understand Parents sometimes need more information and we're trying to get you as much information as possible, uh, but this is what we know at this time, but we are asking parents, we need to know that commitment, whether or not you will send your child back full time to in-person learning or uh, into the fully remote program. Um, and as I stated, the hybrid model will end for elementary school students on April 5th. Uh, again, the two models that will exist will be in-person or fully remote. Um, obviously, over the next month, we are building, uh, rebuilding all of our elementary classrooms, K through six, to accommodate the full return of our, our students. And obviously, we'll be you know, transitioning at some point to rebuild all of our middle school classrooms. Uh, another important date coming up, again, we'll, I'm sure we'll have more information and in, in, um, you know, updates to share with you on Tuesday. But be on the lookout for an invite to the town hall on Tuesday, March 16th. Uh, we'll share as much information uh, obviously uh, with you and uh, what you will notice on the survey when you receive it k-6 parents is uh, you know everybody can can obviously access the survey but we really need it from k-6 parents there'll be an opportunity for you to ask questions uh, and we will take those questions and try to answer them on the 16th uh, we will repeat this process uh, once we know more about 7 through 12 so we will be surveying our 7 through 12 parents uh, you know, more than likely we'll break it down seven and eight and then nine through 12. Uh, but as soon as we have additional information, we will be sharing that with you and getting information out to you, getting surveys to you again about your intentions for uh, the spring. Uh, so as soon as we have that information, we, we will get it to you. Obviously, you know, as I stated in the beginning, it is so important. If you have a question, comment, concern, and it's, it's building specific, you know, certainly feel free to reach out to your building administrators. Uh, but Mr. Swenson, hopefully you and, and I are always available. Hopefully you feel this way. For those of you that have reached out to us, uh, hopefully you feel like you get a pretty quick answer, um, but you get the answer. Uh, you know, obviously uh, information, it, it sometimes, you know, it becomes that game of telephone. Well, I heard this and I heard that. And next thing you know, um, it, you know, the, the wrong information is out there. So please, if you're looking for information regarding school, please contact the school for that information. Uh, there is our contact information. Feel free to reach out to us via email, via phone, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, but again, we appreciate you taking the time uh, to watch this whenever it may be. It, it may be uh, on, the, on the 10th, maybe on the 11th, the 12th, whenever you have time to sit down and, and, and watch this, we truly appreciate you taking the time. And if afterwards you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. But I can assure you, uh, this is not all the information we will have for you. So stay tuned uh, for more. Uh, and again, you know, that we're, we're, we will be updating uh, any information that we get as soon as we get it. Um, but I really appreciate, you know, you taking the time this evening. And again, uh, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. 
And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be in touch. Be on the lookout for information from Mr. Swenson uh, over the next day or so. And he will be sending you an email with the survey, uh, with this presentation, with the PowerPoint. And then obviously on Friday, we'll be submitting, uh, sending out additional information as well. Uh, okay. Have a great evening. I uh, hope everyone is doing well. Stay healthy and safe and we'll talk soon. Thank you.